Looking back on Manitoba's history, it is clear to us that the services and organizations at the time of Red River were extremely beneficial to making the basis of what Manitoba is today. So today I'm going to be focusing more on one particular topic, the Grey Nuns. It began over 200 years ago in the city of Montreal, when Mother Duville founded an organization to aid the poor and sick. Many people at that time believed that this would be a difficult position for the nuns to be in, especially with the amounts of people who were sick and ill in Montreal. Men believed that they were crazy and drunk to come up with such an idea, so they were referred to as Grey. But these nuns weren't just going to let this name define them, so they decided to embrace the title by wearing Grey robes. In 1819, Bishop Provence of St. Boniface sought religious people to help teach the youth of Red River, which is known today as Manitoba. The congregation consisted of 34 nuns, 17 of which volunteered for a journey to Red River to settle there and help the youth. There were four women who were chosen to journey to Red River, Sisters Valad, La Grave, Coulet, and La France. They arrived on the shores of Red River on June 21, 1844. It had been a while since they had made a solidified resting place, seeing as they left their homes in Montreal on April 24th, 1844. The fast arrival of the four grade nuns was difficult for the locals to construct a large house for the women, so instead a smaller house was constructed for the nuns to live in temporarily. The house was cold and was made from logs, but luckily these nuns were strong women, who were able to adjust to the cold and harsh winters of Red River. In 1846, the nuns' residence was built, the first oak house in Western Canada and the largest oak building in all of North America to date. Sister Vlad was a superior nun who was most well known as the Grey Nun who established the convent and other services to the community of Red River. She was seen as a savior in the eyes of the sick, poor, and the destitute. Sister Coulet and the France were the primary teachers of the community. They educated the youth and the Métis to further their education. But it was Sister Le Grave, the nurse, who identified the harsh conditions of Red River and how it affected the people there. Sister Le Grave recognized that the people who were living in Red River at the time were in much more need of medication and medical care, instead of just the education that was being offered by the Grey Nuns at the time. But it wasn't just the Métis and the French who needed the Grey Nuns' help. There were also many other types of people, such as Scotsmen, who needed help within the Red River community. In October of 1844, Sister Le Grave began to visit the sick within their homes. It proved to be an easier journey to take a Red River cart to the people who lived further away from the St. Boniface area. And within the first 10 years, 6,000 visits were recorded. But in 1846, the disease was rapid, and the sisters were forced to close the school so that they could attend to the sick and nurse them back to health. Unfortunately, not all could be saved. 96 men and women died within the settlement from June 2nd to August 2nd. The average was seven a day, Influenza wasn't the only hardship that the nuns and the Red River community faced. Floods, plagues of grasshoppers, and lacks of food due to flooding fields were also very significant within this time. But despite all the hardships that the Grey Nuns encountered, they stood their ground, did their job, and went above and beyond. They did everything that men told them that they couldn't, and ultimately made a basis and a structure for what Red River and Manitoba is today.